This is a 2019 Dodge Challenger SXT, which means it's the uh, base model V6 version, and it's bright orange. So why in the world would, would I be reviewing this thing? Well, as some of you might know, my Fiat was recently in a hit and run, and while it's in the shop getting repaired, I had to get a rental car. Now, of course, whenever I show up to the rental car place, they had a Chevy Malibu picked out for me. But the guy was like, hey, take a look at everything on the lot, and if you see something you like, you can have that instead. So I glanced over at the lot, and you know, most of it was just like Nissan Maximas and more Chevy Malibus. But then I spotted this thing, and I was like, I want that one. And of course you know if I was ever going to get behind the wheel of a Challenger, it has to be orange. You know, since this is from a rental car place, it's uh, not really anything special. It's completely basic in here. And of course it has the V6 and the uh, <coughs> automatic. Yeah. But it is still just kind of uh, hilarious and obnoxious. Now my very first impression of like what I got in the car is that it is freaking huge. Really, it's like SUV size in here. And it feels like it's SUV size outside too. And considering this one's around 4,100 or 4,200 pounds, kind of handles like an SUV as well but not that bad of one now an interesting bit of trivia on these guys is that the chassis was actually lifted from an early 2000s Mercedes-Benz so it kind of drives like a 20 year old Benz which isn't really a bad thing as far as technology goes it's got some cool stuff like in the dash it's got like a performance meter and mileage and you know I don't know all that good stuff right stuff that drivers don't really care about that much. And it's got an infotainment screen over here with all the stuff that you would normally expect. And I will say that they do something that I find incredibly annoying, and a lot of new cars do this, and I can't stand it, is they have climate controls in the touchscreen itself. I, I can't stand it. That's just terrible to be fiddling with the touchscreen when all you want to do is just like change where the vent controls are or something like that. The good news is that they do have some climate controls as actual buttons. Now this being the V6 model, performance isn't anything to really write home about. But it'll still get up and move. Now this definitely isn't the kind of car that changes direction quickly, but it does kind of handle the curves nicely. It gets up to speed reasonably quickly and uh, yeah, I don't feel any weirdness at all. In the, in the handling. It actually uh, feels very progressive when it breaks away. It's usually the rear end breaking away when it does. And funny enough, this thing has a sport mode and uh, you can actually turn the contraction control off too. Now in the settings, you can change how your steering feels from a normal to a sport and then a comfort. And it definitely changes how heavy the steering is, but I don't really notice any kind of change in the actual feel of it. Sport mode just makes it a little heavier feeling, like you, you still can't really tell what the heck is going on with the front wheels. I really get the sense that the car is more set up for comfort than anything else, and it is reasonably comfortable. And the noise levels in here is pretty nice as well. Uh, there's not a whole lot of road noise coming through or wind noise. And these seats are the most basic seats you can get. So it's, I mean, it's fine. I mean, I don't really have a problem with it. One thing that's really interesting is that I'm six foot three, and I have the seat about in the middle of this adjustment. This would actually be a really great car for someone who's over seven feet tall. But even though that's the case, I would actually ask for a little bit more seat depth. The seat just doesn't feel long enough for me. I'd like for it to like extend out to my thighs a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, I can kind of see like why people like these things. Wouldn't mind having one myself. Of course, I would opt for the V8 and the manual, of course. thing about this car is the trunk is freaking huge and the seats fold down too to get you even more room I was able to get a full-size futon mattress in the back and by the way I'm doing this uh, entire review at a recipe speeds so you can kind of get a sense of how good this car actually kind of is like it handles the curves nicely 
light is big ass. All right, we got a nice little carousel here. See how she does. There we go. Suspension's finally loaded up all the way. it wouldn't be a challenger review without some dirt roads huh you know when the back end steps out it, it actually feels pretty good pretty controllable i kind of think dirt roads like this is really what this car is made for it's pretty comfortable too oh yeah that was nice you know it's nice and smooth over these dirt roads too the washboarding stuff, it just kind of glides right over, and yeah, it's good. All right, bye. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>